Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Wake Tech Virtual Transfer Fair. This session is for Campbell University, and my name is Amanda Tucker. I'm one of the academic advisors on the Southern Wake campus, and I'll be assisting with this event along with my colleagues, Natalia and Lauren today. We are so excited to have James Evans with us from Campbell University. James will be leading us through a PowerPoint presentation and a Q&A session. And we encourage you to ask questions through the Q&A box throughout the presentation today. Those questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. I will also put a survey link in the announcements at the end of the session today to get your feedback about this session. If you complete the survey, you'll be entered into a drawing for a $25 gift card. Thank you again so much for joining us today, and I will go ahead and turn it over to James. Welcome everyone. Again, as um, Blair said, I'm uh, James Evans. I'm one of the transfer counselors here at Campbell University, um, and I'm very excited to uh, present to you today on our campus. Um, one thing I want to say first and foremost is that, um, you know, through these um, troubling times, um, we've been able to operate um, fully in person. Um, so, you know, that's something that, you know, uh, we've taken a lot of precautions in, in doing and are very happy um, to do so. Um, so I'm happy to, again, answer any questions that you guys have um, after the presentation. And with no further ado, um, I'll get started. Again, uh, Campbell University, um, we are a private university in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Um, we're about 45 minutes um, south of, of Raleigh, um, as you can see here on our map. Um, and this kind of shows you uh, where exactly we are in, in uh, accordance to any uh, major city. So, you know, um, hour and a half from Greensboro, about three hours from Charlotte. And uh, for you beach lovers, uh, we're less than two hours from uh, Wilmington. Uh, this is our um, main campus here. Uh, Campbell University actually started off as a um, Grading, grade school um, and over the years has evolved into the university that we have here. Um, as you can see, some students are uh, standing by our statue of J.A. Campbell. That's our founder. Um, again, Campbell was founded in 1887, so we are um, 130 plus years old. So Campbell really hangs its hat on offering, um, you know, a lot of service opportunities for students. Again, we are a Christian university, so service is really big for us at our foundation. Uh, we're going to offer um, lots of relevant programs for our students. Um, currently, we have 150 plus of them. Um, so that includes majors, tracks, concentrations, um, and minors. And what we're trying to do is, is provide you with not only a great education, but uh, we want a well-rounded individual um, coming to us and also graduating. Uh, this is a breakdown of our uh, demographics. Uh, we're about 4,500 undergrad students. Um, about 80% of them are going to be first-time, full-time students, and then about 20% would fall in the population, of course, here at Wake Tech um, with transfers. Uh, 52 percent, I mean, sorry, 52 to 48 is a ratio of females to males. Um, and then we have about 2000 uh, graduate students. Uh, most of our students are North Carolina residents, as you can see, um, uh, with 20 percent uh, being out of state and 1 percent being international. And then we uh, represent 46 states and about 40 countries. The first program that I want to introduce to you is um, one that's near and dear to my heart because I work closely with the department. It's going to be the School of Engineering. Um, as you can see, it's uh, located here in Cary Rich Memorial Hall. Uh, we're going to offer three concentrations right now. So a student will come to Campbell and actually be able to study um, general engineering, uh, but then have a concentration for mechanical, chemical, electrical engineering, and there is a pending concentration right now. I won't speak of that, but again, um, for, for many of you guys that are interested in engineering, we do have our sights on uh, one more. Uh, as you can see, our students are not only in lecture halls, but also in labs. Um, we pride ourselves on having something called a class lab, um, space where students are going to be um, in a space no more than 24 students to the professor. Um, so you're going to learn a lot of things through lecture and then put them to work. Uh, this is our Dean of Engineering, Dr. Carpenter. Um, she came to us from Louisiana Tech and has a, been a great asset to our organization. Um, the College of Pharmacy and Health Science is another um, really popular um, 
program here at Campbell. Uh, many of our students are interested in pharmacy or the health sciences. Um, so this is where many of them will be, um, you know, as they matriculate in from um, uh, places like Wake Tech and are interested in anything like um, pharmaceutical research, um, PharmD, uh, clinical research and the likes. Uh, the unique thing about our program um, is that, you know, <clears throat> students that come in with a, a two year degree uh, can actually apply to a professional degree um, right away if they have all of the prerequisites. And as you can see, uh, we're very successful with the 98% first time board passage rate. Uh, we have excellent opportunities for advising, uh, second in the nation for clinical research, and then again, we have accelerated programs. So um, a student, um, for example, that's looking at a PharmD program, um, you can actually complete that degree um, in as little as six years. The bulk of students are completing it in seven, and you can also do the traditional route of completing your undergrad degree and then also uh, completing that degree in four years. So um, again, uh, we pride ourselves on some great programs. This is a little bit more information about the program itself. Um, so again, we, we're gonna provide advising, but also uh, mentorships as well. And then again, as I mentioned, you know, the six year uh, program, uh, you can uh, complete the, the degree in six years um, if you have all the prerequisites. And then again, I want to share at the bottom some of our dual degree programs. Another one of our great programs um, started in 2013 is the School of Nursing. Um, it's a unique program in a sense that it's um, it's an undergraduate program, um, which is Bachelor's of Science in Pre-Nursing. And if you are chosen, um, you will matriculate into this program uh, to complete your BSN, so actually your Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Uh, this is our, our beautiful nursing facility. It's also home to our PA program and also PT program as well. Um, all three of these programs um, have cohorts of about 50 each year. Um, and again, uh, PA, I think uh, the last five years has been has graduated 100% of their students. And I think the last two years, the same has been the case for our PA program. So a little bit more about our nursing program as it is an undergraduate program here. Um, so clinical rotations are, are huge for us. We try to start those in the first semester. Um, again, as I said, the first year students are um, gonna be classified as pre-nursing. Uh, currently, we have a 93% pass rate on the NCLEX, which is amazing. And then again, 100% of our job seeking grads are employed. Um, as you can see, we have strong relationships with not only community hospitals, uh, but also um, some of your uh, larger hospitals like Rex and Wake Med. Next door to that is gonna be our um, uh, Jerry Wallace School of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, so again, a beautiful uh, campus there. Uh, what we're trying to do here is not only provide a great opportunity for education um, in the medical field, but also uh, we're going to take a different approach. So um, other than uh, the likes of like the MD, we're going to be looking at the body, mind and spirit. So we're not only um, interested in what symptoms um, you're having, um, but we also uh, want to know from you you know, how's that affecting your day to day life? Uh, what are some things that we can do to adjust those things for you? So we're not only going to um, um, treat the, the patient, but not but also the symptoms. Um, and as you can see, uh, there is a little bit more, um, I, I would say, almost like a chiropractor approach um, to our medicine. Um, and then we're not only going to offer kind of uh, kind of your specific like Western medicines. We're also going to look at some um, maybe um, herbal options as well um, for students. So um, again, this is a great opportunity for students if they're looking at an alternative to completing an MD. The other great program that, that we have is uh, or school, I should say, is our business school. Um, so Campbell actually offers 11 different tracks in, in, within our business school, um, everything ranging from business administration to accounting, uh, PGA, which is a, a professional golf degree, um, trust and wealth management, which I'll speak about in just a second, um, and then some um, dual degrees and um, some uh, graduate degrees as well. So we have one in trust and wealth management and also uh, now accounting. 
Um, as I said, uh, we have some great opportunities. Uh, four plus one program is, is very unique to our business school, so you can actually complete your undergrad and also grad degree in five years. Uh, we also offer career services for our students. Um, internships is, is a must, um, especially in the business field. So uh, we want to provide paid internships for our, our students. Sometimes um, they, they aren't paid right away, uh, but of course that's our mission. As I said, we, we offer a trust and wealth uh, management program at the undergrad level. A lot of places you'll find that at the graduate level. And again, we're the only um, school that offers that. Um, in the last 25 years, that program has, has had a 95% placement rate. And again, you're eligible for your CFP and also uh, CTFA uh, upon graduation. And as you can see, um, we have some great uh, partners uh, down below. Um, again, you know, small uh, and more community based banks and then some of your more corporate bankings. Another option is uh, School of Education and Taylor Hall here will have um, a psychology department, education, um, social work um, and also divinity. So again, a lot of great programs um, within this uh, location. Uh, for the School of Education, we're going to offer uh, birth to secondary education um, and again psychology and social work also. And then we have some of our um, our graduate degrees as well. So a master's in uh, mental health counseling, uh, a master's in education, uh, of course, for elementary, middle and secondary education um, and then counseling as well. Students that are interested in the arts, we have so many opportunities here at, Camp, at Campbell. Uh, we just opened, as I'll show you in, in just a minute, Hobson's Concert Hall. Um, that's the second installation um, that Campbell has offered for um, theater and, and again, fine arts. So um, for, for those music lovers or, or ones that are interested in theater um, or, um, or the arts, uh, again, you don't have to be a part of these um, degrees, but if you have an interest and you want to maybe um, you know have a minor in art or music or just want to do it as an extracurricular uh, we have so many opportunities for students and we also provide some scholarships for you as well so um, definitely take a look at our programs uh, next is our most popular program which is um, in biology so we have biology chemistry and uh, and slash physics so um, biology actually has um, eight different concentrations so uh, students can you know you can be a pre nursing pre pharmacy um, pre dental uh, pre veterinary medicine and and again these are going to set you up for that professional degree um, we have probably 60 percent of our students um, that come into Campbell looking into programs that are stem related so um, again, if you're looking for a smaller school that offers a lot of great opportunities in the STEM fields, um, Campbell is definitely one of one of the schools that you want to uh, take into consideration. As you can see, these are some of the stats that we have um, for our students that are looking at research, um, some of the opportunities that, that they have, excuse me, um, for internships, and then also where they go after they graduate from Campbell. So again, you can stay at Campbell or um, you can go to Duke, John Hopkins, UNC, Vanderbilt, um, and even, um, you know, the last couple of years we had a student at an Ivy League um, school in, in Yale. Uh, continuing in the College of Arts and Science, these are some of our other opportunities. Um, I'll, I'll definitely point out Christian studies because we have uh, lots of students that are interested in that. Um, I'll mention um, right now exercise science um, is another opportunity if you're not so strong in biology but want a health science background uh, for graduate or professional school. Um, mathematics is a, is a great opportunity where um, you become a math teacher or um, as big as an actuary or you know anything mathematics related and then uh, we pride ourselves in in having a superb ROTC program uh, both Air Force and Army now. As I mentioned before you know those um, uh, art and music buffs we have again uh, um, Hobson's Performing Arts Center um, again it was finished last year completely renovated um, and we had the Raleigh Orchestra in there um, months after uh, the completion of that. Um, in this building, you'll also find uh, academic programs like Homeland Security, Cybersecurity, um, History uh, with a lot of with pre-law concentrations, um, criminal justice um, and the likes. 
as I mentioned just uh, just a moment ago, um, criminal justice, history and political science are in, in Hobson's. Um, and these are some of the concentrations that you can look for um, within those degrees. Uh, security and, and, and computing programs, as I mentioned, cybersecurity, homeland security. Um, we see a lot of students uh, do majors and minors or also double majors in a lot of these uh, programs because a lot of the, the core work is, is very similar. Um, and I think last year we had uh, over 50% of our students that were interested in homeland security uh, do a minor or double major in IT management and security as well. The next uh, school that we'll talk about is, is our law school, which is actually not on our main campus. Um, it's actually in downtown Raleigh. Um, and I will say, in addition to Campbell having our main campus, we also have some satellite campuses as well. Um, so those are for students that uh, may have other responsibilities. Maybe you have a family, uh, maybe you're working full time and then uh, want to still um, go to school. So inside of our law school, we actually have Campbell University Raleigh campus uh, where we offer about 12 degree options there for students. Um, but again, the, the biggest draw is definitely our law school and, and here's why. Um, so we have an accelerator program. Um, so if you completed three years um, and and have a pre-law concentration, excuse me, concentration um, and wanted to continue uh, law school at Campbell, um, you can do that all in six years. Um, so you would actually skip your senior year at Campbell. Uh, if you did that, you would also receive a $10,000 a year scholarship towards that. Um, and again, some of the, the reasons why this is such a great opportunity is we're downtown, uh, we're located in downtown Raleigh where there's so many uh, job and um, just internship opportunities for, for our students. And then we have a, a huge alumni network there as well. And the biggest thing I think that that students are drawn to is that we have top top bar passage in the state. Um, and typically we're usually um, either one or two in the state for bar passage. So a lot of students are interested in getting to law school, but uh, will you finish and will you finish on time? Um, and Campbell has shown that we have um, a great track record of that. So one of the things that we want to, to really um, show to students is you can transition from a two year institution into a four year institution. And what we try to do is um, provide you with more um, information and opportunity. So I know many of you all are taking ACA 122, uh, which um, you know offers um, the opportunity to, to learn more about college and study skills um, and going to a four year institution, um, the rigors of those um, courses and classes are going to be um, just again a step up. So we want to provide you with more opportunity for that. So we have those uh, those resources on our main campus for you. We'll also do career development and, and career fairs. Um, so students may come to Campbell um, and have uh, you know ideas of, of what they want to do as a career and we want to start to cultivate that with you. Some students want to say um, want to come to, to Campbell and say, hey, I want to work right away. Um, so career services can help you with that, whether it's on main campus um, or at another um, opportunity off campus. And then we have counseling services for students, uh, tutoring and writing centers that are open um, usually from about 7 to 10 p.m. for for our students um, and of course academic advising. Uh, I think one of the great things about Campbell is um, Within our library, uh, we're, we actually have a uh, second floor that's open 24 hours for our students. So if you are a night owl and you like to study, uh, you know, and not, not cramming per se, but study, um, this is a great opportunity um, for you to, to get what you need and, and not feel as though that you have to be quiet inside of your dorm room um, or in your apartment or wherever you live. You can actually have a, a dedicated space on campus uh, for students uh, to go. These are some of the opportunities for our students. Uh, many of these are going to be uh, going to start at the first year, um, but we do have some four transfers. Um, and I think the biggest thing is our honors program. Um, so students can certainly look into that opportunity as well. The biggest thing that we hear is, is 
what can you offer for food at, Cam at Campbell? Um, so I'll show you in just a second our new student union that has our cafeteria, uh, but these are some of the other options on campus. Uh, the only one that, that's not on the main campus will be the Java City because that's over at the um, medical school. Global engagement. So uh, this is actually um, has been changed in the last two years. It used to be called study abroad, which you'll see on, on many campuses. Um, but again, we wanted to be intentional about what we're doing. So we're offering global engagement. So uh, we have both independent and also faculty led uh, programs. Uh, these are some of the more uh, concurrent programs uh, that we offer here at Campbell. But um, in total, we have about 50 uh, countries that we work with. So uh, we, we not only provide the program, but afterwards um, we provide a class that students can kind of debrief and uh, if you want to continue research um, or if, if you want to um, maybe look to, to um, moving to that place and, and maybe doing an internship, um, we have all those great opportunities for you. So uh, we don't want you to take a great trip and then come back and everything stay the same. Um, a lot of these trips are very transforming for students. So again, we want to, to really dig into that and, and see how we can, uh, again, help you. So if you want to go back and do an internship, if you want to implement something that you learned on this trip to your, to your local community, again, all these things are, are going to be encompassing under that, that global engagement umbrella. So again, we're very happy about kind of the changes that have happened within this program. Uh, some other student activities, um, more formal options, um, nine sororities and fraternities, which is a newer thing for Campbell, and we're still trying to grow that for social media um, outlets for, for students. Um, and we, we're always looking for more volunteers, 60 plus club and in, uh, intramural sports, and then 21 division one sports here at Campbell. Again, we're, we're at about 4,500 undergrad students, but we're offering 21 Division I sports, so that's very exciting um, for those who are interested in sports. Uh, these are, uh, again, the breakdowns of, of kind of the campus rec umbrella. So again, 40 intramural, uh, 20 club sports, and then um, 12 fitness classes. The bulk of those are gonna be um, housing our new student union, and then some are gonna be in our old uh, gym, which is Carter Gym. Uh, this is our convocation center. This is where we have most of our, our graduation ceremonies, uh, but also home to the men and women's basketball team and then also our volleyball team. Uh, this is Barker Lane Stadium. Uh, this is our football stadium um, and then also um, women's lacrosse shares a stadium um, as well. Uh, total seating there is about 5,000. Here's a list of our uh, Division One sports. Um, again, uh, 21 in total. There seems to be um, some debate every year, uh, you know, which uh, sports is better, either the men's or women. Um, typically, it's women have more sports uh, teams that are that are competitive. Uh, but again, our, our men's basketball and baseball team are very good as well. Uh, again, we are Christian University, so we're going to offer um, either formal or informal opportunities for worship. Um, this is our formal worship center. Uh, Butler's Chapel uh, was built in 2009 here um, at Campbell University. A beautiful, beautiful uh, place to be. And again, if you want to grow spiritually, this is an opportunity for you. One thing I do want to mention, um, it's, it's usually the elephant in the room when I talk to students uh, that are coming from um, outside institutions. Uh, they want to know, do I have to take church or do I have to take a um, uh, Christian class or, um, you know, how many of them do I have to take? Uh, it's a requirement for students to take Introduction to Christianity. And again, that goes over the history of Christianity um, and that would be the the only required course. Um, again, if you want to grow in your faith and want to take more uh, classes that are, are Christian based, um, there's definitely many opportunities for you. Um, again, we have informal um, gatherings on campus as well. So um, again, it's, it's totally up to you. Um, we're not here to convert anyone, but again, we are a Christian university. So we want to um, just provide you with those offerings if that's something you're interested in. And, and again, you know, this kind of ties into what I was saying, you know, faith, learning and service is, is really big. So, um, you know, we provide so many service opportunities and, and here are a list of a few of them. Um, 
one in particular that we that we really love is our resident chaplain. So they are actually a um, an added resource in many of our um, uh, dorm rooms uh, for students that want to talk to someone in confidence. Um, but again, it's it's again what you make of it, um, and you know we're we're a great um, community of, of people. So um, again, we want to provide you with any resources and 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 a listening ear um, if you need it. Um, as I mentioned, our new student union uh, is the Oscar Hare Student Union, currently the largest um, structure on our campus at 115,000 square feet. Um, these are some pictures of the inside of it. This is upstairs looking into main campus here. Um, upstairs, you'll see the, sm the smoothie bar where students can hang out and, and grab a smoothie. And, and I think they have a lot of organic uh, chips and, and just um, you know, snacks options. Uh, one thing I'll also mention is uh, up here we do have a cinema. Um, so you know, due to COVID, we haven't been able to take advantage of it, but we will be showing new movies um, inside of our student union uh, once we're able to, um, you know, once we're past this COVID. Um, and then downstairs we'll have our cafeteria. Uh, it seats uh, 450 uh, plus students um, and we have um, I think six or seven stations where students can can choose from and many of them are going to be rotating. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we have a banquet hall, as you can see here, um, upstairs in the student union. Um, it can open up to, I think, 800 or so seats and can collapse to three separate spaces. This is, again, our fitness uh, and wellness center. Um, so right here, what you're seeing is uh, where they will go to have certain fitness classes. And again, these are all free for students. Um, these are our, this is our workout facility. So um, it's actually two levels at Campbell. So you know, any of your free weights are going to be, of course, at the bottom and any of your ellipticals and things of that nature. Um, Pelotons, those are going to be at the top level. Um, and, you know, as I conclude today uh, with my presentation, you know, I, I'd be, um, you know, not I wouldn't be doing a, a good service if I don't go over the, the requirements for admission. So uh, students that are interested in, in Campbell, we are rolling admission. So uh, we've actually been taking transfer applications since um, le the latter part of actually July. Um, so what we require, of course, is your official application. Uh, please designate that you are a transfer student. Uh, we have many students that, that decide to do campus transfer because uh, they feel as though they're coming from a different campus to ours. Um, but again, the, the best designation for you is going to be um, new transfer student. We then require your official transcripts, and I do have transcripts there as well with an S because if you um, did any dual enrollment um, courses prior to arriving at Wake Tech, um, you know, you want to send those as well. If you went to another school prior to getting away tech, um, you want to send those transcripts because we need a cumulative uh, GPA for you. Uh, if you apply to Campbell and don't have uh, 24 credits earned at the college level, um, so that wouldn't be any of your foundational courses. That would be your general, um, you know, English comp or um, college algebra, psychology, sociology. If you have less than 24 of those hours, we do ask that you submit your official high school transcript and you can just send that directly to me from your guidance counselor at your high school. And in addition to that, we do ask for AP and IB credits um, so that we can give you credit for those as well. Uh, so scholarships. So this is um, something that's near and dear to my heart because I used a lot of these scholarships when I was um, heading off to college. So uh, we're going to offer a merit based scholarship um, first for our students, and that's going to be uh, dependent on your your cumulative GPA. Uh, we do require at least a 2.5 here at Campbell uh, on up to, of course, a 4.0. Um, our need-based scholarship is something that's new, um, so we're, we're happy about that as well. Uh, but the requirement for that is you have to complete your FAFSA. Um, so prior to you being packaged as a student at Campbell, um, you will have the opportunity for a merit-based scholarship, again, based on your cumulative GPA, and then the need-based scholarship based on um, you know, what, what comes about from your FAFSA. Um, and what we're looking at is that number, which is your EFC or your estimated family contribution. Um, and then we have outside scholarships. Um, these can range from a bank, um, like a community bank or um, the Rotary Club, anything that's outside of the institution, uh, we're definitely going to accept. And if you go to our financial aid website, you'll see tons and tons of scholarships. So we're always encouraging students to uh, apply for those. 
And the last scholarship is going to be endowment scholarship. So that's all for the students um, after they've been accepted into the university and have completed at least one semester. Um, and then you can go to your advisor or your department chair and uh, request a list of, of those scholarships. Typically, they're going to be um, uh, GPA based, so um, most of them are going to have a threshold of about a 3.0, um, but as long as you have that, um, you can apply for those scholarships and of course they're going to range from uh, maybe $250 to, you know, I've seen several thousand. So um, again, that's another opportunity for you um, here at the university. All right, so this concludes my uh, presentation today. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, and then at this point, I would love to answer any questions that you have. Um, and as I uh, depart today, I, I want to make sure that you you guys see our social media uh, tags here. Um, so definitely follow us for um, any updates. And um, again, thank you for having me. Um, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, James, for that presentation. Um, I am going to open it up for the question and answer portion of the presentation now. And first question is, are there any majors being offered at Campbell University? So it was a little hard to hear you, Blair. I'm sorry. Um, I heard, are there any, um, what sorry. specific majors? Are there any new majors being offered at Campbell? Yes, there's a there's a, a number of new majors that are that are being offered at Campbell. Um, one in particular is um, actually it's it's called bio um, bio humanities, um, and it's it's a combination of um, health science degree and and also uh, it's strong in humanity, so so English and literature. And the reason why is because we have a lot of students that are interested in healthcare, and studies have shown um, that students that um, have a strong humanities background um, and also, of course, a strong um, um, health science background um, do better on the MCAT, um, and then also tend to have better uh, bedside kind of. Um, etiquette. Um, so that's one of the newer ones. Um, as I mentioned in my in my presentation, cybersecurity is, is a newer program here at Campbell um, as well. And uh, one of the, the newest installations that we have for many of our programs, and uh, you would just have to, to um, ask your advisor, is uh, not, not only does business have that four plus one program where you can get uh, two degrees in five years, um, but many other programs um, on Campbell's campus um, offers that as well. And I would ask that student if they want to follow up, if, if they have any particular um, programs that they're that they're interested in, then maybe I can elaborate a little bit more on that. Okay, thank you. The next question is, what is the required classes as a transfer student or what are the required classes as a transfer student? Um, and, and I guess that means just in general. Yeah, yeah. So um, to 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 I guess um, bring you in as a transfer student. Um, you only actually have to have one completed class um, at the college level. So again, as I mentioned, like if it's English comp, if you have one class post high school, that would actually constitute you as a as a transfer student. Um, to go a little deeper than that, um, if you were looking to achieve a scholarship or merit based scholarship, as, as I mentioned, of course, you would have to bring us up to 12 credit hours. Um, again, if you have less than the 24, then we would require the um, official high school transcript. Uh, but because you're going to Wake Tech, um, many of your classes are going to transfer over, especially if you're under the transfer pathway. Uh, so, of course, that's the Associates of Art um, or Associates of Science. Um, and then for some students that are, are doing a an AAS, uh, Associates of Applied Science, uh, we have a BAS option as well for those students. So, um, by and large, most of your classes are, are going to transfer to Campbell. Um, and I would say the only ones that we see that don't would be anything that's more technical. So um, stenography or um, if a person is doing, um, I think it's like landscaping or, or, or something more technical, welding, um, those tend to not transfer um, as a one-to-one -to, -one to Campbell. Okay, thank you. The next question is, is Campbell University friendly for students with disabilities? 
Yes, yes. Actually, um, I was talking to a student earlier this morning um, who, um, again, you don't you don't have to disclose anything to us, um, but uh, I got her in touch with Miss Laura Rich, um, who's um, uh, in in career services. Uh, she has a, her department in there, but um, it's it's called accessibility. So, um, you know, any student that has a disability um, that has a prior like IEP, um, those students will be would get in contact with Laura Rich. Um, you can do that prior to the admissions process being completed, um, but she would just again go go over kind of the um, opportunities or the, the the accommodations that we can offer to you um, here at the university. Great, thank you. The next question, do political science majors at Campbell University have to write a lot of papers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the quick and easy answer. Yes, yes. There's a lot of research happening right now. Um, you know, Political science is 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 such a wide and and, and uh, vast program, but um, if you're looking to go into like politics or, or you know um, public office, I mean, there there's so much, especially kind of with the climate that um, you know students are are really digging in and, and having some great discussions here at Campbell. Um, you know. I don't want to get too political, but we do have like a an independent uh, club and a Republican club and a Democratic club. And again, um, you know, I've, I've seen some great debates. And again, at the end of the day, you know, we're going to take you as you are coming to Campbell, um, you know, and that knowing that everyone has a different background. Um, but I think everyone should be heard. Um, and as long as you're appropriate in, in your approach and um, providing, you know, uh, good information and, and good ways of thinking about things, you know, we're definitely for it. But yes, to answer your question, um, yes, they do write a lot of papers. Great, thank you. And the next question, will Campbell University offer a master's degree in library and information science in the future? That's a great question and I and I honestly, um, I don't know that that answer. I know a lot of answers, especially about uh, different majors and things of that nature, but um, that hasn't been um, a topic that that has come up um, frequently in, in our discussions. Um, you know, but I, I think if, if you do decide to come to Campbell, um, you know, we can certainly guide you in the right direction in, in finding that school um, that's a best fit for, for you at that grad level. Great, thank you. The next question, what classes are required for a political science major as a transfer student? So if you're coming in with your AA, um, of course, you know, we are part of the articulation agreement. So uh, we're going to take up to 64 of your credits. Um, and then from there, what what I what I provide for my students um, is a, um, a, a it's a degree outline or a degree audit. Um, so you can see what's remaining. So um, if anything is is still remaining outside of the articulation agreement that are usually Campbell specific classes like our intro to Christianity, um, then of course you would have to take that. And then more than likely, um, you know, you'll start taking classes for your major. Um, so, you know, if that student wants to, to contact me directly, I can certainly give them, um, you know, what a political science uh, major um, or, or degree audit looks like um, at the four year level. Okay, great. The next question is statistics and e is statistics considered an easy math course for students at Campbell University who struggle with math? Um, so so I would take it away from um, is it an easy course at Campbell and and I'm going to really dive into the individual. Um, so you know, with my job and, and being a counselor per se, um, we're going to really talk about kind of where your struggles are with math. And um, if if you've done college algebra, how well did you do there? What were some of the resources or accommodations that you needed? Um, because usually it's it's not uh, statistics. I can't even say it statistics necessarily. It may be um, math in general. Um, so, you know, in addition to to being accepted to the university, we want to get you in, in touch with your advisor, 
um, and then also tutoring. So um, this hasn't been asked, but we have tutoring um, in a myriad of different ways at Campbell. So we have, of course, um, tutoring that you can get from your um, from your professor, um, you know, because they have regular office hours. Um, there's a lot of peer to peer um, tutoring that happens at Campbell. And then in our library, we have a space dedicated to tutoring. Um, so again, you know, those are all your options. All of them are free of charge. Um, but yeah, you know, we would we will again want to dive in and, and see you know how we can help you um, with that specific class. Great. The next question, what are the minimum requirements to be admitted to the osteopathic medicine program and what kind of jobs can I get with this degree? Um, so so I I specialize in undergrad admission. So um, if 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 you can um, Again, my information is, is here. Um, reach out to me and I can actually send you to their website um, and it shows you all of the requirements for for osteopathic uh, medicine. And, and again, treat it similar to, you know, someone who's looking to go to med school. Um, so, of course, you're going to have to have all of your prerequisites completed in the bio biology field, um, anything uh, chemistry related, anything physics related. Um, and again, uh, when I send that information to you, it'll show you exactly what you need. Of course, you'll need to, to do well on the MCAT. Um, I think we admit about 150 or so students into that cohort each year, so it's super competitive. Um, I think there, there are less than 20 DO schools in the country, um, and I think we're the second largest. So uh, many students are looking to come to, to the DO school here at Campbell. Um, excuse me, so it's super competitive. Okay, thank you. And jobs is, I'm sorry, the other por portion of it is jobs. So um, I'll share something personal. Um, I have a, a son right now that's that's actually being treated at Duke University um, and his um, primary care person is actually a DO from Campbell. Um, so you can work anywhere in healthcare um, just as any doctor could. Great, thank you. Thank you for that information. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the next question is from a student who is interested in the online programs, specifically healthcare management and or business. Yes. Is the transfer process different and is it possible to double major when in online programs? So the process is, is, is different um, than applying to the main campus, yes. Um, so um, I can certainly share information um, uh, to that student about um, you know going or getting to that website it's it's pretty actually easy it's online.campbell.edu so it'll be just the online dot portion and then campbell.edu and it'll actually show you all of the um, opportunities for starting the application um, i think uh, the biggest difference is once you complete your application, you can actually upload documents to them um, versus at Campbell's main campus. We actually have to have them come from the institution's registrar's office. Um, and then as far as double majoring, yeah, you can certainly do that um, because, you know, you're you're getting a degree at Campbell. So um, if we offer um, the the actual major itself, um, on main campus or online, then you'll be able to do a double major. You would just work with your advisor to make sure you're getting all of the, the core courses completed in addition to any other um, outstanding courses. Sounds great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The next question is, can political science majors at Campbell University participate in internships? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, I feel like the student, um, you know, has some great questions. And, you know, one thing I'll offer is that we, if, if you don't feel comfortable coming to, to campus, because um, we are offering uh, in-person um, visitation for students, um, you know, this student, uh, he, and, he and I or she and I can sit down and actually talk about this. I, I have a personal Zoom link um, and I'd be happy to, to sit down and go over all, the, all these things with that student. Great. Um, the next question is, can a student get a certificate in herbal medicine? They can, but it would be it will be outside of Campbell. Um, and and I may have misspoke when I said like an herbal kind of 
uh, like treatments and things like that. Um, when it comes to DO, what we're what we're trying to do is um, again treat the patient and the symptoms. And sometimes um, outside of um, outside of kind of traditional medicine, um, there could be other opportunities. Um, and again, I'll, I'll go personal here. My my youngest son suffers from um, epilepsy, um, so he's on traditional medicine, but also the DO um, suggested maybe looking at CBD options as well. So um, he's actually responded better to some of the tradi non-traditional medicine um, and some of the more natural options. So that's what you're going to get uh, from a DO versus, you know, maybe an MD. Not that they're not qualified, but a DO is going to do more research um, on traditional, but also um, holistic medicine and, and, you know, different things like that. Okay, great. What is, the next question is, what is the retention rate at Campbell University for transfer students? So it's it's very similar to our, our freshmen. Um, so it's about 72% uh, um, for, for students. And I think we do a really good job um, when we're bringing students in um, and getting uh, the best student possible um, and making sure that they can complete their degree in a timely fashion. Great. And the next question, what is the acceptance rate uh, at Campbell University? So I, I think maybe I guess transfer. It, yeah. Yeah, and I would say it's, it's very similar to um, our freshmen. Um, we're, we're not a, an early admit or early action school. Um, being a private university um, and, and being a little bit different from like your Dukes and, and maybe I think even Davidson, um, you know, we're going to admit students that that meet our qualifications. So again, um, I think that approach, you know, in addition to rolling admissions, uh, gives students the opportunity to really apply, um, you know, be evaluated and come and visit if they would like. And, you know, we, we tend to take the stress out of it because it can be a super stressful process, um, you know, especially if you're applying to multiple schools. Um, so we, we try to do our best to provide you with as much information as we can on the front end so that you and your family can make that decision on the tail end. So um, again, it's I would say acceptance rate is, you know, somewhere in the 60s or so. Um, but again, it's I think it matters more for for schools that um, are, are more picky, I would say, um, than, than I would say most private institutions. The next question, and I think you touched on this a little bit already, but um, how does Campbell University help students who struggle with math? I didn't know if you wanted to add anything to what you'd already said. Yeah, like I said, uh, we, we if well, I think the first piece of that is is taking the initiative to let us know that hey, I'm 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 not great at math, um, and I think also you know um, figuring out what that student's major will be. So if they're you know, something that's, you know, heavy in math, maybe we have to talk to them about, you know, hey, it's it's not that we don't want you to pursue this degree. It's, it's hey, what accommodations are you going to need in order to be successful with this? So again, we have tutoring centers. We have peer-to-peer uh, -peer tutoring. Um, again, we have, um, you know, uh, office hours that our, our instructors have um, for students that may be struggling in those, in those classes. But I think the first uh, step is acknowledging that that you're probably going to struggle in this course and getting to a resource that can that can help you out. Um, and then, of course, with your going to your professor, they're going to maybe encourage you to, hey, you know, stay back and let's kind of talk about this. Or, hey, there's this group meeting at 8, 8 p.m. Can you meet with them as well? They, they've seemed to really turn it around in, in this course. So um, just having that open dialogue is important if you are struggling. And I will say, do that as early as possible. Don't wait until it's too late and you have to withdraw from a class. Um, that would be my, my suggestion. Great, those are all great suggestions. Thank you. You're welcome. The next question, does the school have dorms or visiting tours face-to-face? So I'm thinking, um, yeah, two like, parts probably. Do you have dorms? Okay. Do you have open visiting tours right now? Yes. Yeah, so we, I'll ask answer the visiting part. So we are doing in-person tours. Um, I think we're um, 
minimize to about one um, visit per hour. Um, if a student, you know, has um, some some other priorities or 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 are, aren't able to to make it to you know some other days that they don't have an open schedule per se, um, we would ask that you let us know what's the best time um, and date to come in. Um, because if we have to have two appointments in in an hour, we want to make sure that we're spaced out. Um, and on our um, visit Campbell website, it actually tells you what you'll need in order um, to be let into the building. Um, so of course, face mask is required. Um, you know, make sure if you if you have symptoms um, or someone in your house has symptoms, you know, be sure, you know, not to come. <laughs> um, we will do a, a temperature screening uh, prior. Um, and then again, you know, once we're touring campus, if we're in buildings, then it is required to wear a mask. Uh, most students are, most students and families are wearing masks uh, for the entire visit. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely something that, that we're encouraging, you know, uh, students to do and families to do in a safe manner. Um, but again, if, if you don't feel safe, then we do have virtual opportunities. Um, and as far as dorms, um, that's a great question. We do have dorms, of course, um, for upperclassmen. Um, so it's going to be more suite style and apartment style for, for our transfer students. Um, if you would like to live on campus, um, I don't know that this will stay the same post COVID, but right now, uh, we actually have single rooms for all of our students. So um, I think that's a, a great selling point, especially in this climate. Um, and then if you don't want to um, commute from home, but also don't want to live in a traditional dorm, um, if you reach out to me, I can I can give you, I think I have at least 12 to 15, um, you know, options around campus uh, that are affordable, um, where a lot of our students live, and those would be apartments or townhomes. Great, it sounds like there are a lot of options. The yes. next question, are there any new clubs being created at Campbell University? All the time. <laughs> and and usually they're, they're being created by students that are coming from a, a different institution. So um, on the books right now, we have like 70 or so that are non-athletic clubs. Um, and again, most of those have come from, you know, students coming out of high school into college um, or coming from other institutions to Campbell. Um, and it's a it's a great um, opportunity if you want to start your own club. As long as you have the interest and it doesn't cost a million dollars to, to start it and, and keep it running, um, usually our faculty is open um, to, to creating a club for students. So. Uh, great question, and if you have, um, you know, that spirit of, of starting something and, and being a leader, um, we're definitely going to going to help you with that um, and encourage it because that's something that you can certainly put on your resume. Great. The next question is, um, I am a transfer student at Wake Tech and I'll be graduating this summer. What classes will I need to take to transfer? And, I, and this may be more specific to the, the major yeah. or something now. Yeah, I, I think it, it would be specific to the major. And, and I'll go back to, again, uh, Campbell University recognizes the articulation agreement. So if you're completing your uh, AA or AS um, through the transfer pathway, then we're going to take um, all of those classes um, and um, you know insert those into your degree. Uh, excuse me, if you have a a degree outside of those, um, then of course, you know, we're we're, we're definitely going to encourage you to apply um, and and be evaluated officially. And then from there, I, I will take it a next step and um, schedule a meeting with me so that we can go over those classes prior to meeting with your department, um, because it's going to be important for you to understand prior to um, you know, them looking at a schedule for you um, because some students, they will get confused or they're like, hey, I thought that this was going to transfer over. Um, so I, I try to take that extra step prior to meeting with um, departments about schedules. Great. The next question, what is the required GPA? Uh, 2.5. Cumulative. So that's if you've only um, attended Wake Tech, then you know, a two five or higher um, will um, allow you to be accepted into to Campbell. Um, if you've gone to multiple schools, of course, we will look at the cumulative GPA there. Um, again, that's the minimum. Um, you know, 
we're not just you know looking for the minimum because also um, your scholarship is going to be predicated on that. So of course, the higher your scholarship, the more I mean, sorry, the higher your GPA, the more scholarship that you're going to get. Um, and then for those students that are at, at a three five or higher, uh, we actually have a specific the um, PTK scholarship. So I know at the community college, you guys have that that honors organization um, Phi Theta Kappa. We actually honor those students who have that three five or higher um, and offer a scholarship uh, that's uh, a couple thousand dollars a year. So uh, we're, we're definitely taking all students um, into consideration when we're making scholarship uh, choices. Um, and again, um, you know, I would say that's the, the two five is the minimum. But again, uh, I would say on average, our, our students are uh, transferring with, you know, three O's to like a three two on average. Great. And the next question is, do transfer students at Campbell University have a higher graduation rate than native students? That's a that's a tricky question because um, we have so many accelerated programs, so um, I don't have the answer to that. I will say that uh, transfer students tend to be more mature when they come in, um, so that's usually a good sign um, that that graduation is, is kind of imminent. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's why I love working with this population because um, they know exactly kind of what they're they're doing. They have some college under their belts. Um, so I would say more than likely uh, if they if they come in and do, you know, what they're um, are supposed to do and, and take it serious, they have a really high um, graduation rate. I would say um, and again you know take take into consideration that students may come in and do a, a dual degree or, or um, pick up a minor so that may stall graduation um, but again you know we're we're looking for the best students and and students that are that are wanting to graduate and um, go into their careers great thank you the next question is healthcare administration offered at campbell is healthcare administration um, as a major? Not, not specifically. We have healthcare management, and that, and that's um, housed in our business school. Um, so you will you'll definitely have health science classes, um, but that's that's geared to, to to someone who wants to work either in a hospital or some health science um, uh, kind of uh, field, uh, but don't want to have don't want to do direct support uh, with patients. So um, anything administratively, um, that's the best option that, that we have. And um, again, we've, we've been very successful and a number of our students um, will again do the healthcare management MBA dual degree, um, which, is, which is awesome. Great, thank you. Does Campbell offer any early childhood education courses or programs? No, but we we do have. Um, I think we signed the articulation agreement with um, community colleges for that. So um, you will you will end up getting more credits towards. Um, you know, if you're if you're doing you know birth to like kindergarten, um, you know, if you're transferring into the university, uh, but nothing specific to um, early childhood education. Thank you. We have two more questions left. Um, so the first one, what's required to get into law school? And I know that might be. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very similar to that, uh, to the med school question. Right. Yeah, so they should just reach out for more information. Is that right? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, um, the, the requirements at, at, a, at a very generic um, uh, standpoint for law school is, um, graduating from an accredited university, um, and it could be almost any degree, um, that's that's usually a requirement, and then you have to have a, a great LSAT um, score. Um, so you could graduate with a music degree or political science, um, healthcare management, um, but I would say by and large students that do well at, in law um, take courses that are, that are heavy and critical thinking um, so um, I would that that would be my en encouragement for students when they're looking at law school um, if you if you are a music major because that's your passion but you also want to 
do law as a career. Um, I would suggest doing a minor in, in, you know, maybe English or criminal justice or um, history or, or something of that nature. Great. And the last question is, is about foreign language. So is foreign okay. language required at Campbell University? Uh, depending on the major. Um, so we have majors like um, our nursing, like pre-nursing and business, like um, unless you're international business, um, you know, by and large, the, the 12 concentrations that we have in the business school um, don't require um, you to have come in with a college level um, foreign language. So um, it, it, it will suffice, you know, whatever if you've done two years consecutively in high school. Um, however, um, there are the majority of, of our uh, majors will require foreign language and um, some are going to be um, at the intermediate level. So that will be like a Spanish 201 or some will actually go to a Spanish 202. Um, so you could take um, three Spanish courses or if you feel comfortable um, taking just you know the the intermediate level then you can certainly start there um, and of course any student that that would be a native speaker um, or who is fluent can can certainly uh, test out if 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 you know you feel comfortable and confident in that great thank you so much for answering all those great questions you're welcome um, it doesn't look like we have any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the event. But I did just want to say thank you to everyone for joining and submitting these questions. And thank you so much to James um, for joining us today and that presentation. For anyone still in the event, please be sure to uh, complete the survey that is linked at the bottom of the Q&A. That's just to let us know how we did with the event. Um, and just to improve for the future. But we hope that everyone has a great rest of their day and that you'll join us for future events. And I'll go ahead and end the live event now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time.